Today I'm going to show you how to get 100% completion of the Ash and Winds commendations and get the Bane tattoos, the Scorched for Second Ashes set, Sail of Ash and Winds, Frostbite cannons, and a bunch of titles. So, in 2020, Sea of Thieves launched an update called Ash and Winds. In this update, they added a new world event called Ash and Winds, where you fought these giant fire skeleton lords, known as Ashen Lords. Now, they added a bunch of commendations around them, which rewarded players with the Bane tattoos, a different Bane tattoo for each of the four Ashen Lords, and the Sails of Ashen Winds. Now, since then, they've been expanding on the reward pool for these, and have also added the Frostbite Cannons and the Scorched Forsaken Ashes set. All of these rewards can be purchased from the normal vendors, but require commendations to do so. In this video, I'm going to be going through the basics of fighting and defeating an Ashen Lord, and then we'll go over how to get every single Ashen Winds commendation, which will allow you to buy the entire Scorched Forsaken Ashes set, which is a clothing set, equipment, weapons, and ship set. It's a whole thing. All four Bane tattoos, so Grimm's, Roos, Horatio's, and Cheese Bane tattoos, the Sails of Ashen Winds, Frostbite Cannons, and the titles Banisher of the Flame and Warsmith of the Flame. First of all, we'll go over the basics of an Ashen Lord. So, what is an Ashen Lord? An Ashen Lord is basically a skeleton lord, but covered in fiery crystals. There are two different ways they can spawn, either in an Ashen Winds event, which will be marked by this giant fire tornado. Just go over there, and when you get there, there'll be a ritual, and then if you walk up to it, it will explode and then one of the Ashen Lords will be summoned. The other way is through Fort of Fortunes. Fort of Fortunes are marked by the giant skull cloud with red eyes and cracks through it. And a Fort of Fortune is basically like a normal fort, except more difficult, and the final wave instead of having a Skeleton Lord is one of the Ashen Lords. These do take considerably longer than the Ashen Winds event, and also are way more likely to be player contested as they offer much more loot. Now that we know how to find an Ashen Lord, how do you fight an Ashen Lord? Now I'm going to be using quite a bit of information from the wiki, so I'll leave a link in the description to the article about the actual battle, because there's a few things like numbers in here that I didn't actually know before making this video. First things first, there are four different Ashen Lords, all of them share a moveset and act exactly the same, have the same health, everything. The only difference is their model and their voice lines. The voice lines do signal what attack they're using, but there's like three voice lines for every attack for every Ashen Lord, or roughly that, so I'm not going to go over every single voice line for every attack but they're pretty self-explanatory. Now, Ashen Lords have three phases, each phase getting progressively more dangerous. We'll start with all of the commonalities between the phases. Now, Ashen Lords have six basic attacks. First of which is their melee attack, where they just kind of like, try and slash at you with their claws. This will knock you back and deal a decent bit of damage. Next attack is their lunge attack. They'll lean down like this and then lunge forward, knocking you back and dealing a considerable amount of damage. And this attack can be easily avoided by sidestepping or getting some kind of object in between you and the Ashen Lord. If there's a barrel or a rock or a wall or anything between you and them, they'll get stuck on it and won't be able to hit you. If you're really close to them, you can just spin in a circle around them and they won't be able to turn fast enough to hit you either. Next is their boulder throw. Basically, they'll pull out a rock and then hurl it in your direction. There's two versions of this attack, they'll either throw it forward directly at you, this one's a bit harder to avoid, or they'll throw it up into the sky and then arc it down to hit you. If they throw it up into the sky, just try and move away from where you were standing when they threw it. Also, if there's no one fighting the Ashen Lord, they will throw boulders at your ship, which will deal damage, so it's best to keep the Ashen Lord away from your ship or keep someone fighting it at all times. The next ability is Ash Cloud. They'll lean forward and then kind of curl their shoulders and make a massive cloud of ash. This has no effect on the player, it just affects your vision. Most of the time, you still can see the Ashen Lord through it due to their glowing crystals. But if you can't see, you can just run in a direction. It's a pretty small radius. The next ability is Summon Skeletons. Basically, they'll do this animation, and then skeletons will rise up from the ground around them. They can't do any other attacks while they're doing this animation, so it's best to hit them as much as possible during this animation. Once the skeletons are up, the fastest way to deal with them is to get them into a group and then cutlass through them, which most of the time you can kill all of them because they have very little health. Their next and final ability for all phases is Fire Breath. Basically, the Ashen Lord will stop moving and pause for a second, which is a good way to figure out when they're about to do this attack, and then they'll lean back and breathe fire forward. If you're in this fire, or if you're standing really close to the Ashen Lord itself, you'll take considerable amount of damage and be set on fire. Best way to deal with this is to just stay behind them, and don't get too close to their back, because it will also set you on fire. There is a sweet spot though behind it where you can hit it with a cutlass and not get set on fire, though it is kind of tricky to find, so I'd recommend just shooting it with your gun while they're doing this. Now all three stages share all of those abilities, but now we'll talk about stage specifics. 
Now, the first phase is just all those abilities, there's nothing special about it. Once you damage them to 75% of health, so once a quarter of their health is gone, they'll fall over like this and say like, I need to recharge or I need to rest or something like that. Now after either 30 seconds or you deal around 500 damage to the Ashen Lord, they'll get back up and continue to fight. When they fall over, that means they're switching phases. Also, it is worth noting, hitting them in this phase does not actually carry over to their health. So it's best to use your 30 seconds to grab food or supplies or heal up or any of that. The main thing second phase does is it adds a new attack to their roster, the shockwave. Basically the Ashen Lord will raise both their arms into the air and then slam the ground. Making a massive shockwave, the closer you are to the Ashen Lord the more damage you'll take. You'll also be set on fire if you're fairly close to it. This attack also damages the mass, capstan, and wheel of a ship, so it's best to keep them far away. This attack is also telegraphed by a voice line, normally something along the lines of clearing the battlefield. Now just continue to hit them. Once they hit 50% or half of their health, they'll fall over again and then enter the third phase. Now the third phase has by far their most dangerous attack, World's End. Normally this will be one of the first abilities they use upon hitting stage three. Now you'll have a bit of time to tell when they're actually doing this. They'll start by breathing fire into the air and then they'll reach down and punch the ground and then continue to breathe fire into the air. After a second, three effects will happen. First, a giant cloud will appear in the sky, dropping meteors in a vicinity around them. Also, these meteors will do serious damage to your ship, so try and keep it as far away as you can. Next effect are the geysers. Try not to stand on these, as they'll launch you up into the sky, and you'll take a decent bit of fall damage. These can only spawn on dirt, so if you get onto a rock or onto some kind of wooden ground, you won't be able to be hit by geysers. So ideally, to avoid both of these attacks, get onto rocks or planks, and then under a roof. Now the final effect is all the water around the island will begin to boil. This makes it harder to get back to your ship. So if you need to move your ship, try and get back to it before the water starts to boil, as soon as you realize they're doing this attack. World's End is also signified by a voice line, which again changes for all of them. The one in particular I can remember is Bring Down the Sky. Now this attack doesn't last too long. As soon as it's over, go back and keep fighting the Ashen Lord. They will be able to use this ability from now on, so it's best to find a spot you can stay safe. Hey, so quickly, this is after the script was recorded and everything, I just realized looking back at the footage, for some reason Ashen Lords don't talk if it's a Fort of Fortune Ashen Lord, I'm not sure why, but only Ashen Lords from the normal world event will actually say anything. Not sure why this happens, but just talk about the voice lines a bit, they don't talk at all if it's a Fort of Fortune. Now that we're done with the abilities, let's talk about general strategy. So, first things first. The best weapon for fighting an Ashen Lord is a Trident, because one, they do tons of damage, two, they have an AoE so you can use them to kill the skeletons really effectively, and three, they just do a lot of damage. With two people with Tridents, I've managed to kill an Ashen Lord in under 10 minutes, and with three people, around five minutes. Tridents are really the way to go. You probably want either three or four to do this. If you don't have Tridents though, next best thing is a Cutlass and a Blunderbuss. Use the blunderbuss to get really close to the Ashen Lord, shoot them, back up, reload, and just continue to do that. Most of the time you'll be out of the range of their melee, so even if they do melee, they won't hit you. Skeletons a lot of the time will drop ammo pouches, so you can just pick them up when you're running low on ammo. And also most Ashen Lord spawns are right beside an ammo chest, so if you can find that, you can reload consistently. Now the Cutlass is good for killing those summoned skeletons. Again, the best way to kill them is to group them up in a big pile and then sword lunge through them. Now, I am going to bring this up because this is a strategy for fighting Skeleton Lords, but I don't think it's viable here. You can take your ship and then use the cannons on your ship to shoot the Ashen Lord. I don't recommend this because the Ashen Lord has so many attacks that can damage the ship, you really want to keep your ship as far away from them as you can. So, it's a strategy I've seen people use, I don't recommend using it. Now we're going to talk about what happens when you actually defeat your Ashen Lord. When an Ashen Lord dies on an Ashen Winds event, geysers will erupt around them, and wherever a geyser was, there will now be a piece of treasure. On a Fort of Fortune, they will drop a key, which then you can use to open the vault. Now, in both instances, they will also drop something known as an Ashen Wind Skull. This item is important to some of the commendations, which is why I'm bringing it up. But basically, this is a treasure weapon. You can sell it, or you could use it as a weapon. It's kind of like kegs, except you get more uses out of it. Basically, if you hold down the attack button while you're holding it, it turns into a flamethrower. You essentially get the Ashen Lord's Fire Breath ability. You can use this to kill skeletons, players, ships, set everything on fire, whatever you want. But, you may notice these crystals in the back of the skull. The more you use it, the darker these crystals get. 
and at some point the crystals will go completely dark. At that point it's out of power and you won't be able to use it anymore. The darker the crystals are, the less the skull is worth. So if you sell one that hasn't been used at all, it'll be 10,000 gold, and if you sell one that's fully depleted, it'll be 4,000 gold. And that's without emissary. So there is a serious drop in profit from using it. So it's up to you if you want to use it or not. Now that's like the basics of the Ashen Wind Skull. It's important for combinations, we'll talk about that in a second. Also on Fort of Fortunes, from all the skeletons you've killed, you'll get a whole bunch of orders to dig stuff up on that island. Sometimes you can dig up Ash and Wind Skulls from this, so if you need extra, Fort of Fortunes will technically give you more. Okay, now we're going to talk about the actual commendations. So, first things first, to track any of these commendations, go into your menu, Pirate Log, Reputations, Build Rats, Ash and Winds. We're going to go through every single one of these commendations, one by one, to get all of them. Commendation will show up in the bottom left while I'm talking about it, and the rewards it unlocks will be shown above it. And again, you'll still have to buy the rewards, but these are just the rewards it unlocks to purchase. Okay, so first is the Hunter of Captain Grimm. Defeat Captain Grimm five times. So this one's kind of luck based. Whenever you encounter an Ashen Lord, it will be one of four Ashen Lords, which is just randomly selected. This is Captain Grimm. They all have a nameplate above their head, so you can just read that to figure out which one it is if you don't recognize them. Next is Hunter of Red Ruth. Same thing, defeat Red Ruth five times. Next, Hunter of Old Horatio. Defeat Old Horatio five times. This is Old Horatio. Next is Hunter of Warden Chi, and you guessed it, defeat Warden Chi five times. This is Chi, by the way. Now these are kind of luck based, because you have to get the right ones, but you will get these eventually. So it's best to try and just do the other combinations while you're waiting to get these ones. Next is Banish of the Flame. Defeat 25 Ashen Lords. If you get all the Hunter ones, you'll have 20, so you should be pretty close to this by that point. This also unlocks a title of the same name. Next is Hunter of Ashen Winds. Sell 25 Ashen Wind Skulls. So ideally you don't want these skulls stolen from you. If you wanna go specifically for this commendation, Fort of Fortunes give you sometimes a few extras, so that would be the best for this. Next is Skull of Fire. Sell a fully ignited Ashen Wind Skull. This means sell a skull that you haven't used at all, which should be pretty easy. Next is Ash and Bones. Set fire to 20 skeletons or phantoms with Ash and Wind Skulls. After that is Captain of Ash and Bones, which is set fire to 100 skeletons or phantoms with Ash and Wind Skulls. These two work really well in combination with our next and final commendation, Warsmith of the Flame. Set fire to 10 skeleton ships with Ash and Wind Skulls. Now, once you have your Ash and Wind Skulls, you're going to find a skeleton ship. Ideally, just look for one roaming around or go to a skeleton fleet. But who knows, maybe one will spawn on you while you're going to sell. Either way, once you find one, you're going to want to try and crash into it and jump off with your Ash and Wind Skull. It's best to do this with at least two people so someone can stay on the ship and make sure it doesn't sink. Now, to actually set the skeleton ship on fire, you're going to have to aim at a flammable spot, normally somewhere on the floor, for a few seconds with the Ash and Wind Skull. After a few seconds of burning, it should catch. If it doesn't catch, try again somewhere else. The actual flammable locations on skeleton ships are kind of weird. Now, each skeleton ship can only count one time, so you will have to find 10 individual skeleton ships. Also, as a note, this commendation is crew-wide, so everyone in your entire crew will get points towards it, so don't worry about who's staying on the ship and who's boarding. Now, while you're on the skeleton ship, you can also work towards Captain Bash and Bones, the combination that set fire to 100 skeletons with Ash and Wind Skulls. While you're on the ship, if any skeletons walk up to you while they aren't underwater, just tap left click once or twice and it'll do small spurts of flame which barely use any of the skull's energy and those small spurts of flame should be enough to set the skeletons on fire and count towards the commendation. Now if you're doing this you can probably get all the skeletons with one or two ash and wind skulls. It really doesn't take that long. And with that you should have 100% completion of the ash and winds commendations. We'll just quickly go over all the rewards and where you can grab them quickly. The Grimm's Bane, Ruth Bane, Horatio's Bane, and Cheese Bane tattoos can all be bought from the clothing vendor, along with the Scorch for Taken Ashes clothing. The Frostbite Cannons and Sails of Ash and Winds can be bought from the Shipwright, along with the Scorch for Taken Ashes ship cosmetics. The Scorch for Taken Ashes weapons can be bought from the weapon shop, and the Scorch for Taken Ashes equipment can be bought from the equipment shop. The titles Warsmith of the Flame and Banisher of the Flame will be automatically added to your account once you complete the appropriate commendations. Now, I do want to mention that the older items are fairly cheap. The tattoos are only 12,000 each and the sales are 70,000, but the newer items are fairly pricey, with the Frostbite Cannons being 165,000 gold and the entire Scorch for Second Ashes set being around 2.1 million gold. Now, quickly, I do want to say, if you like the Scorch for Second Ashes set, but don't have 2.1 million gold to spend on it, there is an alternative. Now, the Scorch for Second Ashes set is a reskin of the Forsaken Ashes set. Forsaken Ashes set is way older. A lot of it's unobtainable, but the clothing and equipment is still obtainable. 
and can be purchased for only 125,000 gold. If you want to know how to get what's left of the Forsaken Ashes set, I will leave a link in the description to my guide on how to get those. Anyway, that is pretty much everything. If you found this video helpful, it would mean a lot if you would consider leaving a like. It does help with the algorithm a lot, and it just helps show me that the videos are received well and that they're helpful. And also, I make Sea of Thieves guides like this every week on Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, you could consider subscribing. It'd mean a lot if you did. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.